Hey guys, it's Fonzie with Dip Your Car, and we're gonna do something very special today. Now, I've shown you almost everything there is to know about dipping cars. We've dipped a lot of cars together. Today, I wanna to do something totally different. I wanna take someone who's never dipped a car before, an employee at Dip Your Car, who's wanted to dip his car for a long time, and I'm gonna show you what his experience is like dipping a car for the first time. Everything from masking the car, prepping the car, learning how to use the gun and spray, spraying the entire car, breaking it down, everything from A to Z with a first time dipper. Sit back and relax. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Now Gabe is gonna go find Steve now. Steve is who we're working with on this project today. Now he's worked at Dip Your Car for a long time, but he's never dipped anything. Now he's wanted to dip a car for a while, but he's never gotten a chance to. Now Steve knows we're working on this project today. And yesterday I sent him to dycuniversity.com to check out all those videos. At dycuniversity.com, there's a ton of detailed cataloged videos that covers each one of the steps you're going to see today in very thorough step-by-step -step format. So I strongly suggest if you're going to dip your car, especially for the first time, spend some time on dycuniversity.com and learn as much as you can before you jump into the project. Now, Steve's personal car has a bunch of body work that needs to be done to it, so we're gonna let him work on the S4 today, but he's gonna choose the color by himself, he's gonna spray the car by himself. I'm super excited about this project, let's go. All right guys, this is Steve. Now, how long have you worked for DYC? I've uh, been working with you guys for like five years now. Five years, you've never dipped anything? Not one thing. Today we're dipping a car. I'm excited. You're excited. That's Are you big time. nervous at all? Uh, a little nervous, but I, I don't feel like I should be, you know? No, I mean, it's a big project, yeah. but you spend time on DYC University, you mm -hmm. watch some of the videos. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk you through the entire thing today. Now, one of the most important things, what color did you pick? I picked Neo Green. Neo Green. Perfect. Performance series color, perfect for a first time dipper. Now, I'm going to walk you around the car. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and get an idea of how we're going to be masking things off. Because first things first, we washed the car yesterday. We gave it 24 hours to dry. You always want to make sure the car is bone dry. Now that it's dry, we're going to focus on masking first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. Now, Steve is going with Gabe to go pick his gallons that we're going to need for the project. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what to expect in this video. I'm going to walk Steve around the car and explain to him how we're going to approach masking each one of the areas. Then he's going to work with Gabe and make sure that he gets a chance to mask different areas of the car by himself after following instruction. Then we're going to wipe down the entire car and make sure the surface is prepped and ready to be dipped. Then we're going to dive into learning how to use the spray gun, what your passes and your patterns should look like when using the spray gun, and work our way into spraying the entire car. Now, Steve is going to spray this entire car by himself. I'm not going to touch the gun one time. After the car is completed, we're going to walk around. Steve's going to break this car down, remove all the masking, step back, take a look at the end result, and we'll look at it together. And hopefully this will give you guys a very good look as what you can expect as a first time dipper. And as I coach Steve through each one of the steps, I'll hopefully be coaching you guys as well and give you more confidence to go into this project and knock it out of the park. So we're gonna walk around the car right now, get an idea of how we're gonna mask each piece. Now, every single car, every vehicle is gonna be different. The most important thing we're gonna do right now is identify and record the peel when wet areas. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't know what that is, a lot of you do, that's when the area of the car that we're spraying is right up against an area that we're not spraying. Normally when there's enough of a gap, that gap is gonna automatically cut the dip. When that gap is super tight, that area needs to be peeled while the last coat is still wet so you can get that nice crisp line. So pull out your phone, because especially when you're a first time dipper, we always do this even now. When we're working on a new vehicle, you write down the peel when wet areas beforehand. That way, when you're into your last coat, you can review that and you know exactly how to attack it. So on the S4, this trim right here, whatever words you want to use to, uh, to note that, the windshield trim. Windshield trim. And the area along the roof here, because we're going to be leaving the roof black. It's got some old vinyl on it. So this area here, this windshield trim, and this line along the roof, roof those line. are both peel when wet. So write those down. And then Gabe, is there any other peel when wet on this car? Uh, no. I don't think so. All right, so now Gabe's going to walk you through each area. He's going to show you how he's going to attack that area and mask it. 
you're gonna pay attention to that and then you're gonna do the other one. The, the idea is for you to do as much of this car by yourself as possible, cool? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I like to start the engine bay, mm -hmm. get the tape and drape done, do the tape and drape first. This way you drape everything around and then you can do the fine taping around the outside. Okay. So first off, I get as high up as I can in the corner here. And then you're just gonna ride the tape along the edge, right along the bottom edge. Okay. So I come down just onto the headlight, so it kind of overlaps so I can get this area covered. Cool. One other thing you have to do is cut a little slit for your uh, hood prop. And then you're gonna pull the tape and drape across. Yep. Pull it all the way across. And then we're gonna do the other side, same thing. Same way? Same way. You can start up here and kind of angle it towards the edge. And then start pressing it down on that edge. And then what I do here is just pull a little extra, like take it out of the engine bay. Like here. And then cut it. And then just tuck it behind. So what you're gonna basically do is take the tape and drape and ride it along this chrome edge all the way around. Okay. And back up. You want the outside, right? Leave a little bit of chrome show. Yeah. We're gonna put a second piece of uh, yellow tape. Okay. Then I like to line the outside of this grill with the yellow tape so you can get that nice fine edge. And also this is flexible, so it goes right around <clears throat> the curves nicely. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get as close as you can. I us usually leave a little bit of a gap to where you maybe fit the edge of a spudger in. And then continue that all the way around. All right, like that. That tape does stretch a little bit, so you can manipulate it a little bit. So sections like this here, we want to fix that because that would be overlapping. Mm -hmm. And then we would end up having an area with no dip there. Or possibly we'll lift it all up. So what we'll do is just we'll split the tape and just retape that area. And then we'll be able to fix that right up. And then just to make sure you don't get any lifting around the edge, I like to take a spudger tool and just go around and just tuck the edge in. You can use either end, flat side or the round side. Okay. And just ride along the edge and just make sure it stays nice and tucked in. I 
I like to do first is basically go around the outline of the headlight with our flexible tape. Okay. Paper and just kind of there's a little lip mm -hmm. underneath. Uh, the paper is lip able to just kind of tuck the paper behind the bumper there. So it doesn't have to be like jam packed in there like that. No, we're it's just stopping any overspray that's going through. All right. Tape, you're going to want to ride this edge as close as you can mm -hmm. all the way up because that's going to be our pure one without touching the white for it. exactly okay. inch by inch and just press your thumb down as you go along and that'll get the guide one. Windows, we're going to take tape and drape and ride the chrome trim, the upper chrome trim, all the way to the end. Leave a little gap for the yellow tape. Yellow, because there is a gap a little bit into 
in the gap so you can tuck it around the top. Sometimes you can use your fingernail, and other times you can use a sponge. gap here. Overspray can get through here. Through here it can't. It's going to be sealed by tape and drape and the rubber seals there. So what we're going to do is open the door and we're going to mask about two to three inches in from this line here. Now that we have protected the inside from overspray, we're going to continue and do this through all three other doors. Okay, so we're going to mask up the wheels. We're going to take the wheel bag, cover the wheel, and then any space that's left around, we're going to shove the paper uh, craft paper in there. Just make sure no overspray gets beyond the, uh, the wheel wells. It's here to just stuff right in between the gaps. And you can manipulate the paper. We'll just make it sit all the way against the edge inside the middle mm -hmm. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure to straighten it out. You can look at the bottom. You can just spin it exactly. Masking is complete. How do you feel about how the masking went? Uh, it was pretty self-explanatory. The yellow tape actually works with you. The more you stretch it out, don't let it like try to place it down. Yeah. When you when you pull it out, it really works with you. Tape and drape gets a little tricky. Yeah. Not my personal favorite. <laughs> the way I think about it is masking kind of sets up the quality of the dip job. If you half-ass the masking, even if you can spray like a pro, your dip job is not going to come out great. If you do an excellent job on masking, even if you're not the best applicator with the gun, you can still have what would be considered a quality dip job because you're not going to have overspray in the wrong areas. It's all going to be put together nicely. So masking yep. is super important. Now it's time to get the car perfectly clean. We washed it, but we got to make sure there's nothing left on the surface. So you've got your pre-dip, you've got your microfiber. So on the large panels, you can spray the pre-dip directly onto the large panels and work it inch by inch. The smaller panels, you're gonna actually spray it onto the microfiber and go focus on one panel at a time. Don't try to wipe the whole car down. And when we're done with that, we're gonna repeat it. I know it's gonna be a little bit annoying. We've gone through this a million times, but an extra 15 minutes can help you get a spot that you missed the first time and help save potentially a dip job. Because if there's contaminants, wax, grease, anything that's on that surface that you missed the first time, you get it the second time, we don't have lifting, bubbling, issues like that down the road. Make sense? Absolutely. All right, let's get that wipe down done. Cars masked, cars prepped, there's one more thing to do and that's spraying it. I personally feel like masking the car is the hardest part of the job. Spraying it, once you get the routine down, once you get the overlaps down and the pattern size down, it, that's the fun part. And I think you're gonna really do well with that. So we're gonna go over two different stages of spraying. The first one is going to be the starter coat. It's like a 50% coverage coat. After we get that down, then we're going to move over to the wet coats. You want to have those wet overlapping passes to get the smoothest finish. Now I've got a practice hood here. We've got a practice hood for you right there. So I'm going to do a starter coat, 50% coverage. You're going to watch the overlaps, watch how much product I'm getting down. 
then you're going to do the same thing. When we get that down, then we'll move over to the color coats where we get that wet overlapping. Make sense? Got it. All right. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the pattern of the gun is set up correctly. You want a nice linear pattern up and down, and you're looking for about seven inches of height. And you want to make sure that you've got kind of an even pattern all the way through. So what I like to do is kind of work the gun down to the very bottom. That's going to be the smallest spray pattern. Then I'll come up just about three quarters of an inch or so, and I'll start there. So that's going to be a little bit on the small side there. We want to go about 30 or 40 percent taller than that. Got it. So this is about what we're looking for, about seven or eight inches tall, nice and even all the way through. Now we're going to move on to those starter coats. So this is your first coat. This is about 50% coverage. You still want to have your 50% overlaps where one pass comes here and then the next pass goes 50% lower and overlaps, 50% lower and overlaps. So your next pass is always going to overlap the bottom pass of the one above it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So you're going to go for about 50% coverage here. That's what you want to start with so you don't have any fish eyes or runs right off the bat. Let's do that on your practice hood. So when we turn the turbine on, you're going to spray up here. You're going to check your spray pattern, make sure it's still the correct size. You're going to try to remember to keep the spray gun perpendicular with the surface at all times. So if there's a little bit of a curve up here, you're going to be just aiming a little bit down. As it starts to straighten out in the panel, you're going to rotate that gun a little bit down. There's a lot to kind of coordinate at one time, but it will click. It's just a matter of your speed and your distance and kind of getting that rhythm and always focusing on that 50-50 overlap. So again, for the first setup coat, we're only looking for about 50% coverage. All right, good job for your first one. We're gonna do one more setup coat. You can look, actually looks just like the one that I did. We're gonna do one more setup coat to practice again, and you're just gonna bring your distance in a little bit closer. You wanna be about six inches away from the panel at all times. You were a little further back from that, which created a larger spray fan. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come in a little bit closer and just focus again on those 50% overlap. So let's try one more setup coat. Okay. So that one was good. We're starting to obviously build up some product here. So let's head back over to my practice hood and we'll start practicing those color coats where we're going to get much more product on the car. So now that we've got our setup coats done, we're going to start practicing the color coats, which is basically all the rest of the coats of the car. Your first coat is going to be about 50% coverage. Every other coat after that is going to be full, wet, overlapping passes. And you're going to be putting much more product down. And what we're going to do is again, focus on those 50% overlaps, but you're going to come a little bit closer and move a little bit slower. The goal is to have a fully wet out panel by the time that you're done. You're going to see some dryness, some pixelation, and some holes if you're putting down not enough product or if you're moving too fast. So watch what I do first and then we'll transition it over to your hood.
So now we're gonna do our first color coat on your hood. Remember, you're gonna go in a little bit closer and move a little bit slower. The idea here is to build up enough product as you do your 50-50 overlaps to fully wet out the surface. Now, as you go, if it's not fully wet out, just keep moving because we can cover that up on your next coat. Just try to get comfortable with it. So that one was pretty good for your first one. As you can see up here, the coating is already starting to dry. Down here, it's staying nice and wet. The reason for that is your overlaps down here were a lot tighter than up here. So you were about a 70-30 overlap up here, which means this was your spray pattern and then you were only overlapping about 30% of it. So we wanna tighten up that spray pattern a little bit and get closer to that 50-50 to get that nice solid wet coverage. You're gonna try to tighten up that overlap you're gonna pay attention to where the bottom of your spray fan is, and that's gonna be your center line for your next pass. The bottom of your spray fan, center line for your next pass. That way we make sure we get those tight 50-50 overlaps. And on this one, let's make sure we avoid that angle. You don't wanna be out here or out here on the edges. I wanna encourage you to, to walk a little bit more. Walk yourself, walk yourself, just to make sure that the gun is staying perpendicular to the spray surface, cool? That was definitely your best coat yet. You got the nice perpendicular angle, you walked it, you made sure that everything was nice and tight. How did you feel about that one? I felt good about it myself. Yeah. You ready to go to a whole car? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, time to spray the car. We're gonna do exactly what we did on the test panels. First coat is gonna be a setup coat, 50% coverage. Just focus on a nice, decent speed and get those 50% overlaps. Not too close, not too slow. There's a lot of margin for error in the first setup coat. It's really difficult to completely screw up the first setup coat. With that even said, whether it's a setup coat or a color coat, you can only really screw up if you go from one extreme or the other. One extreme being you go way too close or move way too slow, you can get a run. That's one extreme. The other extreme is you're way too far back or you move way too fast where the particles are actually gonna dry in midair and land as a texture on the car. That's where you see that fuzzy sandpaper texture. As long as you're in between those two extremes, it's gonna turn out pretty damn good, okay? And it's for your first job, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All we wanna do is just focus on the basics. So let's get the base coats down with Avalanche Gray first, and then we'll move into color. Let's get the work. So there's no right or wrong place to start on the car. If we were doing the roof first, we would definitely be knocking out the roof and then moving on. What I like to do is go from the top and work my way down. So I like to try to focus on like this right here and knock this pillar out and then walk the length of the car back and forth from the top down until that side of the car is done. Then move over to the back, start on the trunk lid, go back and forth top to bottom until that's coated. Then we'll probably need to refill the gun, work our way over here, work on the hood of the car. You're gonna go this way. And then once you can't reach anymore, pass over here, connect it spray the front bumper area, and then repeat down the side.
All right, setup coat is done. Obviously, you want to see about 50% of the paint showing through, so we're okay here. Now we're going to move on to the color coat. So we are going to go slower and we're going to go wetter. Now as far as critique, what we're going to change from the setup coat, we had a couple areas where you slowed down or almost stopped, and that gave us a buildup of product. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And then we've got the lower portions of the car under that lip. We want to make sure we get coverage underneath there, or else you'll see body, body color uh, left over. You won't get any dip down there. Okay. So far, comfortable? Yeah. Good. All right. Now we get into the color coats, which are going to be the same way for the rest of the coats. We've got a medium kit here, a medium neo green kit. So we've got, I think, two gallons of avalanche gray to get down. When we're done with that, then we move over to the neo green. Okay. We got the avalanche base down. We went through our two gallons of avalanche gray. It's time to move on to the Neo Green. Now the Neo Green is a performance series color. So even though it's metallic, it's very easy to use. It's a lot easier to use than, for example, putting pearls into a top coat. However, because it's a metallic color, there's one thing we wanna make sure we avoid and that's striping on horizontal surfaces. So before we move into the Neo Green coats, you remember that tiger stripe video I told you about on DYC University? We're gonna pause here, we're gonna go back into the office and watch that tiger striping video. Just so that we can refresh how we're gonna apply those coats on the horizontal surfaces, that's where the striping is gonna occur, if it's gonna occur at all, then we can attack it again with a fresh mind, cool? Got it. Watch Tiger Shot video. Yep. Did it make sense? Got it. You feel comfortable going into the Neo Green Coats now? Absolutely. All right, let's mix them up and then we'll pour them in and we'll start shooting. Let's do it.
All right, so your first color coat is dry. Now, all in all, we did pretty good, but let's take a look at some areas where we can improve and make some adjustments. Now, this entire side came out good. We've got this one section right here in the middle, if you see it, where you can still see that gray. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's an area where you missed your overlap. So you came through here, and instead of getting that overlap, you dropped it down a little too low. So we'll keep an eye on our overlaps. Other than that, this side looks good. The back you did really well on. No stripes on the trunk. Everything in the back looks good. This side, you didn't miss the overlap, so we've got a nice, more consistent look over here. And then the hood, we do have some stripes on the hood, but remember, you're not gonna get full coverage on your first color coat, especially with a brighter color, color like Neo Green. So the next coat, we should be able to make a lot of corrections. All of this stuff is just color differences. It'll all correct itself as we build more color. Cool? Got it. All right, Steve, we are on our final color coat. Neo Green is looking good. Everything has started to fill in really nice. We've got good, solid color coverage all the way through, but we've got some more product left, and you know that we use all the product that comes in the cart. We want that durability and peelability. So what do we have to focus on before our last color coat? The peel and wet areas. Peel and wet. Show me which areas are P01 wet, do you remember? We have this area by the windshield, yep. and this upper area by on top of the roof, this strip right here. Exactly. On so, both sides of the vehicle. Exactly, so we wanna go into our last color coat with a plan. Here's what the plan is. We know what areas need to be peeled while a dip is still wet. Yep. Now, peel when wet is by definition when it's wet. You can't just spritz over that area because what that last coat is gonna do is re-liquify all the dip that we already laid down. So if there's any bridging between the car and the tape, we're gonna re-liquify that bridging so the tape will peel a nice clean line. The so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with a nice wet pass up through here. We're gonna double back, nice wet pass up through here. Get this all nice and wet. Then we're gonna put the gun down. We're gonna grab, we got a tab up for you here with the yellow tape. We're gonna peel this down through here, nice clean line. We got a tab up right here with the yellow tape. We're gonna peel this with a nice clean line. Make sure that the tape doesn't touch the wet part of the car. And then we're gonna come back in, pick up the gun, and finish this coat. There's no peel when wet on the back, so we shoot that as normal. There's no peel when wet up front, shoot that as normal. Other side, repeat the same thing we did over here. Cool? Got it, man. Ready? Excited. We're almost done. Let's finish this thing. All right. All right, sir, we're done spraying, but we're not done yet. Now we gotta break the car down. We've got all this masking material that's on the car, and obviously it's not over until all this comes off. So we wanna take it off very carefully. Now, peel when wet areas are the areas that we identify where there's a pretty serious danger of the plastic bridging over any gaps. So theoretically, we should be able to remove all of this masking that's on the car right now without any real fear of any bridging. But things happen. We don't wanna do anything right now that's going to jeopardize this being a complete job. So let's take a look, for example, at the window trim. Before we pull all this off, what I like to do is just take a look at the edge all the way around, make sure there isn't a bubble or a drip or anything that really connected itself. And once you just double check it all, we're good. Now we can start removing it. So what I like to do on this is just peel a little bit at a time and move slow. So we're gonna try and take this off all in one piece. So remember, you've got tape and drape, blue tape, 
and yellow tape all kind of layered on top. So if you lift up the corner, you see how it's all coming, coming off in one piece? You should be able to take this carefully and walk it that way and it should all come off nice and clean together. Just keep an eye on the edges. If you feel anything tug or anything get stuck, then we can take a look at it, but you should be good to go. fight at all. No. Nope. Good. Now we can start seeing everything kind of take shape. Uh, let's get these wheels done. So remember how you jammed the brown paper up through there? Yes, sir. So you're just going to kind of loosen it a little bit and tug it straight down. Don't tug it towards yourself because we don't want to roll the edge of the dip here. Just tug it straight down. Yeah. And then just lift that bag away. is let's get the other three done all right so come to the front we got to pop the hood so that we can get access to all this masking and it allow us to take the front grill off the front headlights off without any resistance and then allow us to come up through here and get the whole roof off so let's start working on that yep and then as you get to the headlight just slow down a little bit and take your time take a look first around the edges and make sure there's nothing connected nothing bridged always worth taking that extra look yeah. Looks good? Yeah. Okay, start removing it. There you go. Yep, just work your way around the outside. Little by little. And that yellow tape really helps you keep that nice clean edge. Yes, it does. There we go. All the way back here. And then we're gonna stop about halfway because we got tape and drape that goes underneath, so we gotta pop the trunk. Thank you. Real smooth. Nice. All the way. So that'll let the trunk open up. side for you and then you're gonna pull the tape and drape off perfect okay now we've got all the masking off the car but before we wrap this whole thing up we did make a couple mistakes on the car today now of course this is Steve's first time dipping a car. We're going to make some mistakes, but I wanna point them out with you real quick so that we can all learn from them together. Now, the first one is, and hopefully you can see it, we had product really pull up right around this area and it created a bit of a ripple effect. Now, it's really hard to see. You have to look at it from the right angle, but it is noticeable if you know what you're looking for. So a little bit of a ripple effect right here over the headlight. Now over here, we did get a noticeable run. We went a little bit too heavy, too fast, too close along this arch line right here. And it pulled up and created a little run right down in here. And then also it followed this line down here and got a little bit of a drip there. So a couple little noticeable runs, but not really that bad over here. We didn't quite get our yellow tape as crisp and as clean as we wanted it to, right on that line. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of a jagged line from here and here. So normally we'd want this to be a little bit cleaner, but that tape job just needed to be a little bit tighter. Other than that, the car looks really good. So we're done. How do you feel just off the bat about the entire process? I feel really good about myself. I, I just painted the entire car mm -hmm. and 
it was fairly easy. It's just getting a handle on the equipment. Not ever using a sprayer before is really something different. Other than that, you catch the flow of it as you go. Yeah, every coat that you dropped got a little bit better, a little bit more controlled, your overlaps got tighter. The difference between your first coat versus your last coat was night and day. And that's just natural. This is a big project. It's a totally new process and skill set that you've never tried before. But overall, the car looks great. Yeah. It's a very forgiving product, as long as you stay away from those two extremes that we talked about. And that's exactly what you did, and you got a really good end result. The masking is a big deal that could really make or break the way the project goes. But overall, for your first time dipping car, I think you did great. I'm really proud of myself. Successful. It was Good. a success. So let's take it outside and show them what it looks like. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, before we go outside and check out Steve's end result, I just wanted to wrap up this entire experience with you guys. Now, this was really fun for me. It's been a very long time since I've gotten to experience what a first time dipper goes through when they use our products, when they do a large project like this. Now, is Steve's end result perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it's not supposed to be perfect. The first time you do something, it's not gonna be perfect. I guarantee you the next time Steve dips a car and he's already asking to dip another car, it's gonna come out even better. Every time you do something, it's just like anything else, it gets better and better. But the product is user-friendly, and as long as you go through the tutorials, you follow the steps and instructions, most people, are gonna get a great end result for the first time. We have hundreds of colors to choose from, and it's very simple, because when you go to our car kits, all you do is you pick the color that you like, then you pick the size kit for your specific vehicle, and that kit will include everything you need, everything you saw us use today, from the masking materials, the spray gun if you need one, the gallons, all of it. Now, if you're going to be a first time dipper, we have split up our car kits between beginner, and advanced and obviously I would definitely suggest you pick one of the beginner kits there's a ton of awesome colors in there most of our popular colors come from the beginner section if you want to check out our car kits click right up here and it'll bring you to the car kits but if you have any questions at all about any part of this process contact us chat with us directly on dipyourcar.com or call in because we love to talk to you guys about your projects now let's go outside i want to thank steve again i think he did a great job let's see his handiwork outside thank you guys so much for watching it's fonzie i will see you on the next video